a first trial test of the .tw report. Now today, originally we were going to record Current Affairs Taiwan, but Michael Turton couldn't make it today, and so I thought I'd test this out and give it a run. Now, if this works out well, the idea is to do about a 10 minute or so report a few times a week. Now, it will be a little bit different than, say, an ICRT report, which of course covers all the news in a very quick format. This is focused entirely on politics, foreign affairs, uh, things like that, and it's a little bit more about why certain things uh, jumped out or, or are important. So the idea is to give a little bit of context and a little bit of, uh, so you can get a little bit more of a sense of what goes into uh, our thinking when we do Current Affairs Taiwan on Sunday evenings, uh, sorry, Monday evenings now. Now, <clears throat> all of this uh, content you can follow on our website, the Taiwan Report website, which is report.tw. So you can check it out. You can check out all these articles. You can uh, double check and, you know, follow up and get a little bit more depth and content if you like. <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to start with some of the um, sillier news from today. Um, the, this is a Taiwan news report, uh, which I pulled some. There's actually a longer, more in-depth CNA one that came out later. Uh, but I went with the Taiwan news one because they tend to be the fastest, and they were in this case. Now, the, this is a Chinese promoter's... Uh, there's a YouTube video, video put up by Potter King. Now, this is pretty funny because he got uh, Tsai Ing-wen to show up there at their studio... And he decided to flirt with the with President Tsai Ing-wen. So the, the video was titled, First Person in the World to Flirt with a President. That was posted up on Saturday. And uh, it was, I saw little bits of it on, uh, on the TV news, and it looked like it was funny and kind of cute. Tsai kind of dealt with it very well. You know, she bantered with them, and it was a little bit of fun. However... China, which has uh, providing them with some funding, a uh, company in China, Chinese promoter, I should say, uh, asked them to delete the video uh, because it said they use the term president. Now, Potter King has said there's absolutely no way that they will do so, and they will not. Uh, they will, uh, basically, the money isn't that important to them. So, let's move on. All right, this is the Love Ferris wheel. Now, if you remember, if you remember, going way back uh, during the campaign for Kaohsiung mayor, Han Guoyu came up with several ideas, uh, some of which were uh, not exactly realistic. This one, however, technically probably could happen. Now, the idea was is that there would be a very large Ferris wheel looking over the Love River, and but instead of just like a little normal, like your normal Ferris wheel. <clears throat> each of the carriages would essentially be a like a little love motel room so that people could it would be like a little hotel um, and then there would be a shopping complex now it turned out that they didn't really have a, a good site for this <clears throat> near the uh, love river but what they did have is some other areas around however as the taipei times reported not a single investor has expressed an interest in developing the old port zone at the port of Kaohsiung, one of the locations considered by the Kaohsiung city government to implement its Love Ferris Wheel and shopping mall project. Now, the, <clears throat> the mayor then went on uh, and blamed them. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the, sorry, let's see here. Uh, the city accused it of not cooperating, this is the ports company, in implementing the project and threatened to raise the percentage of funds it would receive from the development of Pier 21 from 42 to 50 percent in, in order to put the screws on them. Now, that's not the only person that Mayor Han Guoyu uh, blamed. He also blamed Lin Jialong, saying that, uh, and then here's some headlines from uh, local uh, Chinese language sources, a transportation bureau blocking Love Motel Ferris wheel? Lin Jialong spits back, excuse. And in Fount Media, because of the, <clears throat> quote, Love Motel Ferris Wheel, hand slams Transportation Bureau. Lin Jialong, 
don't pass the buck to others because political pro promise check bounced. All right, there's uh, some polling here, which I didn't see in the English press, so I put together something here for you on uh, report.tw. Local Taiwan media poll shows Su Zhenzang's cabinet hits new highs, and Lin Jialong sweeps the top spots. So, according to a Taiwan Brain Trust poll, the executive Yuan cabinet headed by Su Zhenzang has hit a new high in popularity with 48.7% expressing satisfaction and 35.5% dissatisfied. Now, of his various ministers, Lin Jialong uh, and his Ministry of Transportation came out tops in all three categories polled. Public visibility, 45.7, so people know who he is. Their satisfaction with him at 49.3, and Ministry of Transportation, uh, that's his department, the satisfaction is 14.7, which put it ahead of every other uh, of every other one. Mostly people don't really know what they think of most of these uh, ministries or the details. All right, here's a quick one I'm going to go over. Focus Taiwan. Taiwan, uh, U.S. companies to ink packed on F-16 maintenance center. All right, so this is important because, now this is here. Let's take a look at this. Taiwan State-Owned Aerospace Industrial Development Corp, AIDC, and U.S. defense contractor Lockheed Martin Corp are to sign a strategic partnership agreement Tuesday to promote the establishment of an F-16 fighter jet maintenance center in Taiwan, according to AIDC. Now, this may, I'm not a defense analyst, so I'm not really sure, but this seems to me like this would be a good way both to get engineers in Taiwan at AIDC up to speed on certain parts, maintenance, uh, and so on and so forth on F-16s, but in fighter jets in general. This also may be a way that uh, the U.S. may be helping to funnel some technology to AIDC. Now, AIDC is developing, they're the ones who did the uh, previous, um, the indigenous fighters, and they are working right now on building a new set of trainer jets uh, for the Taiwan Air Force. Now, I don't know for sure if there's going to be any technology transfer, but it's definitely a possibility. And, of course, because, you know, the United States would get a lot of objections from China if they openly did a technology transfer. This may be a very subtle way of going about it. Now, it's going to be set up in the Shalu district of Taichung. There's another remote possibility that comes from this, and that is that if there's an emergency with an F-16, the, a U.S. F-16, and they're in the area, they could land at Taichung CCK Air, Air Force Base and then uh, this would be just nearby. So, all right, those are just a few that I've uh, picked out for today. I've got some more coming uh, tomorrow, which I'll go over. But very quickly, before I go, take a look. Uh, you, the, the report is linked to here on our site. The, uh, the Committee to Protect Journalists has come out with a very long report uh, called One Country, One Censor. How China Undermines Media Freedom in Hong Kong and Taiwan. Uh, take a look at it. I may go into it a little bit tomorrow, uh, but for now, you have access to the whole thing. Um, but just very quickly here, uh, take a look at some of the things here. Taiwan faces a dilemma. How does it maintain its openness and press freedom while facing an adversary that has vast resources and technological prowess and lacks the values that have made Taiwan a democracy. Based on CPG reporting, Taiwan does not have a clear answer. As this report documents, China's influence over local, local legacy and social media has grown. That influence has become potentially more worrisome as general elections on January 11, 2020 approach, reflecting fears that China is intervening surreptitiously to sway the outcome. Now, facing potential threats, Taiwan has employed a patchwork of legal and regulatory approaches to punish media for inaccurate reporting or distortions while experimenting with other methods of fighting lies with truth. Anyway, the report goes into considerable depth, talks a lot about the want-want group, and so on and so forth. 
But I think I'm going to leave it there. We've hit the 10-minute mark. So hopefully you'll get more of these in future.